For my final video project of MEMT201, I chose the topic of carburizing steel. The basic goal here is to create a very hard outer surface that has a certain amount of resistance to abrasion, but we want to leave the inner core relatively soft. This will provide a certain amount of flexibility and we won't have as much fracturing due to the material being brittle. This process starts with a very low carbon steel being heated anywhere from 850 to 950 degrees Celsius depending on the application. This heating process must occur in a carbon dense atmosphere. There's a few ways you could create this atmosphere. The oldest and most common way is to pile on charcoal from a hardwood on top of the heated piece. The second way you could do it is in a vacuum and flood the vacuum in the heated piece with a carbon rich gas. The third way is to use a liquid to create the carbon dense atmosphere. Regardless of these three methods, they're all soaked for a certain amount of time. The longer that you soak it, the thicker that the hardened layer gets. Of course, this does affect the characteristics of the material because you may miss out on the inner core flexibility if you have a deeper layer, but it all depends on the certain characteristics that you're trying to achieve and the application that you need it for. There is, however, a special case that occurs at 250 degrees Celsius for about two hours and you air cool it instead of quenching it. This will produce significant increases in resistance to low cycle fatigue or repeated stress application. So you can see the microstructure on the left is before the carburizing process and it's low carbon steel. You can see the pockets of perlite and ferrite and then on the right is the final product the upper two-thirds of the image is the outer core and that is primarily composed of perlite and martensite making it much more dense and much harder the inner core at the very bottom the pinkish color is the perlite and the ferrite of the original material and that is the soft core it's not as dense and the in the 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 very small microstructures can pass and displace past each other a few applications here uh, piston pins cams and piston rings all in the crankshaft require a certain amount of abrasion resistance as we've already discussed however due to their constant vibration from the pistons and the fuel being exploded they can't be brittle because that would be very dangerous we need them to have a certain amount of resistance to that um, this could also be used in bridge beams and building beams anything that requires a beam may be in need of carburized steel. And so this shows that carburized steel is very common, it's all around us, and it's one of the most useful techniques and treatments of steel. But thank you for watching.